The Walking Dead, issue 53. Glenn, oh my god! Glenn, Maggie, it's so good to see you guys. Rick. What are you guys doing out here? Are you okay? Is everyone okay? Where's... My father, my brother? He said... He said if it like the last time he'd see me. Uh, Maggie. Hey guys! Oh. We should probably head on back. Back to where? Herschel's farm. That's where we're staying. It's about a mile from here. We'll take the road. You can follow us. Come on, Cole. Hey, Rick. It's really good to see you again, man. Shit! Okay, time out, boys. What's going on? Are Glenn and Maggie back? <laughs> yeah, you could say that. They are certainly back. Huh? What are you... I'll be damned. Maggie? Are you okay? Maggie? What's going on? I think we're going to need you to look after Sophia for us tonight. Is Sophia here? Rick, I'm... I'm really sorry. Me too. Hi, Sophia. I missed you. It's okay to be sad. We both have dead moms now. I know how you feel now. My mom is crying in the room next door. She's not dead. That's Maggie. She's not your mom. Yes, she is. She's my mom. And she's not dead. Do you remember me? Of course I remember you, Carl. You're my most favorite person in the world. I love you. Um... Sophia's crazy. Most girls are at that age. You'll get used to it, and it only gets worse. No. Really crazy. She thinks Maggie's her real mom. She doesn't even remember her mom. Well, son, the thing is, people deal with death in different ways. Maybe Sophia would be too sad if she remembered her mom, so she doesn't. That's stupid. No, damn it. No, it isn't. And you sure as hell shouldn't think it is. We're surrounded by death. Everyone around us is dying, all the time, to the point that it's something we get accustomed to. This is no kind of world to grow up in. No kind of world at all. And I hate like hell that it's the only world you've got. But that girl, that poor little girl, she's got enough on her mind to have to worry about what you think of her. And by God, if it makes things a little easier, then it should be okay with you. Understand? Yeah, I guess. Sophia's your friend, Carl. That girl, she's lost her mother and her father. She's being raised by strangers. Just be nice to her. That's all I ask. Do it for me. I will. I still like her. I just thought it was weird. I'm sorry. Are you going to bed? No. I've got a bit more to do before I sleep. But you'll be fine. We'll be safe here. Don't worry. Why do I have to go to sleep now? It's not even dark outside yet. It's summertime. You're just a kid. You need your sleep. A couple of hours. I'll be in that other bed here, storing up a storm. Are we going to stay here? For a little while at least, yeah. Carl sleeping? Not yet, but soon. He was on Cal in a minute. No matter how much he wishes, he was still up. Sophia's got a lot of problems, but sleeping isn't one of them. She's out like a light at the same time every night. You okay? No, of course not. But who is? I'm getting by, same as everyone else. How have things been here? Quiet. We get a few rumors a day, half a dozen at the most. We clear them out before they can get to that makeshift fence Herschel made. Other than that, just quiet. You like it here? Thinking of staying? Keep watch, always have someone posted, and it's safe. We can make this work, Rick. Nobody wants this place. There are ten farms just like it forever down the road. It's not the dead I'm afraid of anymore. We would have been okay if we're just left with you. You can't think like that. Stop it before you let it kill you. You got a kid to think about. You can't afford to blame yourself. You don't know what would have happened. We could sit here all night thinking about it. Would have we have been rescued by now if we stayed near Atlanta? There's no way of knowing. 
I swore Romus could have tore through this place while we were gone. We could all be dead if we'd stayed here. There's no way of knowing. Forget the dead. Focus on the living. I know I'd be dead right now if not for you. Same with your son. Same with almost all of us. You can't know you didn't kill the dead. But I can assure you, any of us here still alive, it's because of you. That's a fact. Thanks, Dale. I know what it's like, losing your wife, if you ever want to talk. Sure. Later. Maybe sometime later. Yeah, I would never have taken the offer from someone either. We're not the types to share our pain, are we? Real men. Why are we so goddamn stupid? So what do you think? Should we stay here? I think I'm through making decisions. If you want to stay here, I'll stay. If you think we should go, I'll go. As long as Carl's safe, I'm just along for the ride. I don't care if you think I was safer. I hated being alone. I like these people. I care about them. I'm staying. I'd like it here. I don't- Uh, Michonne. Who are you talking to? Nobody. I wasn't saying anything. Michonne, I heard you talking to someone. Are you really going to lie to me? I was talking to my boyfriend. My dead boyfriend. I know it seems crazy, and I'm probably just imagining it, but he speaks to me, my boyfriend, and I can hear him clear as day. I know it sounds weird, but it helps, you know? Sometimes I imagine he's in control, like he's helping me, doing things almost like I'm not even in control. It makes things easier, easier to deal with. You think I'm crazy. No, I don't. Because you have a phone. If I picked up this receiver, my wife would be talking to me on the other end. <laughs> I would hear her. She would say things to me, right here, right now, while I'm looking at you. I know she's only saying what I think she would say, but it seems like I'm really talking to her. I took the phone from the house I found it in, because I couldn't bear the thought of not being able to speak to her again, even though I know it's not really her. Okay, so we're both crazy. Seems like it. I won't tell if you don't. Deal. What? What is it? I don't know. Stay here. Okay. That was a warning shot. Next one takes your fucking head off. Guns on the ground. Now. We don't want any trouble, friend. We just came here for supplies. Please. We can just go. Just let us go. No. We need supplies. We're not going anywhere. Get their guns. Pat them down. We're not taking any chances. What? Who the hell? Nobody moves. Your friend on the roof's got that covered. Uh. Oh, shit. Uh. Oh, God, oh, God. I got this, son. Put the weapon down. All of them. You gonna shoot me? You're in a stationary camp and you were gonna shoot me? Your friend went to pick up my gun, was he gonna use it? Not very smart. Quit running your mouth and tell me who you people are and what the hell you want. There's a radius around this place. A limit to how far the sound travel. Picture that area as a net and every time you make a sound as loud as a gunshot, you catch every dead person in that net and you drive them here. Eventually, you will be overcome if you use firearms or carelessly. Have you not experienced a herd yet? Shut the hell up and tell your biker friend to put down the damn knife. Can everyone just calm down and tell me what it is you people want? Why are you here? I'm Sergeant Abraham Ford. My companions are Rosita Espinoza and Dr. Eugene Porter. We're on a mission. And we're here for supplies, food, whatever you can spare. Maybe even more than you can spare to be honest. If I had my druthers, I'd load all you folks up and bring you with us. The more of us involved, the better chance we have of making it to Washington, D.C. alive. Washington? Why would you want to go all that way? If there's any place that's organized, safe, it's D.C. They're set up for disasters. They're probably better off than anyone. I was in contact with them in the early days of this disaster. If we're going to turn all this around, we'll need them. How do you plan to do that? I'm a scientist, mister. 
I know exactly what causes this mess. <laughs> <laughs>